today we are making a tic-tac-toe game out of air dry clay. My name is Ladera McKinnon, a teaching artist at Clay Works in Charlotte, North Carolina. This video is presented by Clay Works in Charlotte, North Carolina and sponsored by Culture Blocks, a community partnership between ASC, Charlotte Mecklenburg Library, Mecklenburg County Park and Recs, to bring arts and culture experiences closer to where residents live. Culture Blocks is funded by Mecklenburg County. What came in your kit is air dry clay, acrylic paint, a skewer, and a paintbrush. What you will need from home, a workspace, a small dish of water, and items found around the house for texture. To start off making our tic-tac-toe, game we're going to start off with 10 small balls for the pieces i'm rolling the smallest little balls i can we want these to be about half the size of your pinky so i'm just going to pull off a little bit of clay roll it in my hand as if i'm cold that's going to form the shape of a ball they do not have to be perfect so you're gonna do this 10 times. Now that we're finished with the smaller balls, we are going to make some coils. Coil, a rolled out rope of clay like a worm or a snake. To start a coil, you want a chunky piece of clay. And then you're just going to roll it in your hand back and forth as if you're cold. The whole point is for your coil to get longer. Once your coil is pretty thick, we're going to place it on the table and gently start from the center and work your way out. If yours gets too long, it's okay if it breaks. Gently roll from the center and work in your way out with the same amount of pressure. If there's an area that is a little bit chunky, just use one hand and roll that one area. We're going to need two of these thin coils. Next, we're gonna create the board for our game with a slab. Slab, a flattened or rolled out piece of clay. We are gonna be using our palm to press out our slab of clay, making sure to flip our clay so it doesn't get stuck to the surface that we are working on. So I'm going in a circular motion, but gently pressing the clay outwards so it forms a square. Keeping in mind to not flatten your clay too thin. We want to have a little bit of thickness. You will need a sturdy surface for your board. I have a piece of cardboard here, or you can use your plastic bag. Next, we're going to align the edges. You're gonna use the side of your stick to gently press it into your clay to make a straight edge. You want to have an imprint all the way through the clay. Making sure to stay as close as possible to the edge. I'm going to do that to all four sides. While we're at it, we're going to make our imprints of our guided line for our tic-tac-toe board. We want two parallel lines equal apart dividing it in thirds and then we want to do the opposite way two more lines dividing this into thirds now we're going to cut off the edges 
If your stick does not glide all the way through that strip that we're saving, you can just use the sharp end and gently put some dots all the way down that line and then cut through it so it's easier to cut off. With the small strips that we saved, we are going to roll some tiny coils to go over the grid that we made. So I moved everything out of the way and gently rolled this extra clay into a coil. You don't have to do a lot of rolling with these just because the clay is already thin. But we do want this clay to be really thin coils. I'm going to roll out all four of them. Now that I have all of the coils, I am going to score and slip to attach them. Score and slip, score the process of incising surface of wet or leather hard clay in a cross hatching pattern before applying slip and joining clay. Slip is a watered down clay used for joining clay together. For this project, we are using water. First, I'm going to score where I marked the board at before. Then I'm going to score each small coil. Now that you have scored, it is time to attach them. I am gently pressing the small coils into where I scored and pinching off any clay I don't need. If you have a short coil, just gently soften that edge just a little bit and then go ahead and attach it. Now it's time to attach the border. This is going to be done the same exact way you did the smaller coils. I'm going to score and slip around the edges and the coil and then gently press the coil into the clay. Remembering to gently pinch off any extra clay that we don't need at the end and then use a little bit of water to just smooth out that little edge. While you're at it, go ahead and smooth out anything on your board, any wrinkles, any cracks with a little bit of water on your finger, including the sides of the board as well. Next is time to create our board game pieces. We're going to use one finger and gently press down the small balls. You can reshape them into a circular shape by gently putting them in your hand and rolling them. Or you can roll them on the table. We are only going to do this to five of our pieces. The other five, we are going to be shaping them into a heart. Yours doesn't have to be a heart. It can be any shape that you want.
To make a heart with your small ball of clay, you're going to gently press down in the center and then squish one end of the clay. It's going to look like an ice cream cone. And then you're going to use one finger at the top to press down in the center. Then use the side of your stick to press down the center. It's going to start to look exactly like a heart. Again, you press down the center, pinch one end of the heart. It's going to look like an ice cream cone. Then take one finger in the center and press down. Then use the stick in the middle to press down a little bit more to form that V that hearts have. And then it should start to look like a heart. You can reshape it just a little if you need to. I'm going to do that to the remaining five balls of clay. Now it's time to make finishing touches to your game. You can decorate your board pieces with any type of decorations. It could be polka dots, it could be X's, it could be stripes. For my circle pieces, I'm going to be putting X's on top using the sharp, the sharp end of my stick and also putting some stripes on the back as well. You can use a fork from at home to make some texture. I'm just going to go ahead and use the side of my stick to push in some of those stripes. On my hearts, I think I just want to keep them solid and experiment more with color. Also, adding decorations to your board. You can draw letters, you can just paint the squares with your paint. For me, I am going to make X's and O's and also paint them once my air dry clay is dry. At any time that you mess up on one of your designs, you can gently use your finger and wipe away anything that you don't want. Now we're going to wait about 24 hours for the board to dry. Since the board game pieces are smaller, they're going to dry faster than the actual board. So you can get away with painting one side once they're dry and then painting the other side when you paint the board. These are semi all the way dry, so I'm going to go ahead and paint those today and paint my board. My board is an all the way dry, but I still am going to show you how to paint on damp air dry clay. I'm going to show you how to make purple, so I'm going to start with white, a good chunk, a good chunk of red, and the smallest little dot of blue. If you want a darker purple, definitely add more blue to it. And I want to make a lighter blue make sure you clean your brush really really well in your water and make sure it's dry so I'm starting with the littlest amount of blue and then adding a lot of white to it to get a nice sky blue when you're mixing colors you want to make sure you have more than enough so I'm mixing a good amount of each color I chose using the blue for my circles and I'm doing a light layer on each one, not using too much paint. I'm going to go ahead and paint all my circles the blue color, just on one side.
Before I paint my heart, I'm going to wash my base extremely well in my water, dry it off, and then start painting my purple. If you don't dry your brush really well, it would look like a lot of brush strokes on there, and you can see the clay through it. The water causes your paint to be transparent. So dry your brush extremely well between layers. For my board, I want to use a green and a pink. I need to create the green. So I'm going to start with a lot of yellow and just a littlest amount of our green out of our palette. I'm going to mix that together to create the color. If I wanted to make this lighter, I can add more yellow or more white. To make our pink, I'm using a lot of white and just a littlest dot of red to create a pink. Red is an extremely powerful color, so you want just a little bit inside of your white. To start painting our board, I'm using the lightest color first. I'm starting with a nice light layer. My clay isn't all the way dry, but I'm still going to put a nice light layer of pink. Since my board isn't all the way dry, I can use the sharpen of my stick to reinforce the texture that I added inside. I'm going to go ahead and continue to paint the other squares on my board with my lime green. For my border, I'm going to be using black. I'm watering it down just a little bit. This is when I want it to be transparent because the black color is a very strong color. Also, I chose black because it's going to make my pink and green pop out more. When you're in an area with a darker color, you want to use just the edge of your brush with no pressure. That's how you can get some nice fine lines with not a lot of paint on your brush. Take your time when you're doing these stripes on yours. Now that you're done painting your board, you can paint another layer on the opposite side of your pieces. And once you're done with that, you can touch up your board if you need to. Now 
And there you have it, a tic-tac-toe game. Thank you for watching this video and thank you to our partners.